Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to create a kaleidoscope effect inside Unity. All we need to do is go through it so that you guys can understand what I've done. So if I hit play, you'll be able to see the effect. And at the moment, I've got the post-processing turned off, but if I turn it on, you can see it goes really neon and cool. And we'll cover that in more detail in a little bit. The first thing we need to do is create a new project in Unity and we're going to use the 3D Universal Render Pipeline, that's URP, template for our project. The next thing we need to do is get rid of our default main camera. Then we're going to add a global volume by right-clicking, going to volume, and hitting global. This is going to allow us to control post-processing on the scene. Then what we're going to want to do is hit new in the profile to create a new profile for our post-processing volume and we're going to drop that into our scenes folder. This is going to control all of our overrides for our post-processing in the scene. All you really need for this scene is to add a Bloom post-processing override by hitting Add Override, Post-Processing, and choosing Bloom. Bloom will be on this list at the top. It isn't for me because I've already added it to the scene. The next thing we're going to do is add two empty game objects by right clicking and selecting create empty. We're then going to reset the transform for these by clicking in the top right hand side of the transform in the inspector and hitting reset. That's just going to make sure that our game object empties are set to zero and we're going to do that here too. So the first empty we're going to call cameras and then kaleidoscope and the next empty we're going to call kaleidoscope and effects. Next step is to create a new camera. We're going to do that by right clicking, going down to camera, and then we're going to drop that inside our camera's kaleidoscope empty. We then want to set it up so that when our effect is playing, our camera can only see one quarter of the effect. Okay, so that means that the bottom right hand corner of our camera will see our particle effect and then we'll be able to duplicate this camera and change its projection matrix so that we can have a kaleidoscope effect. So in order to do that we need to position it like so. In my scene I've got it at minus 83 on the x-axis, plus 46 on the y and minus 80 on the z. Next thing we need to do is just make sure that post-processing is ticked in the rendering options of the camera. We're then going to set the background type from skybox to solid and we're going to choose a background color. For me I've just chosen a really deep dark blue. The next thing we need to do is have a look at this camera flip script. We're going to take a little look at this. This is going to allow us to flip our camera on the x-axis or the y-axis, or both. All we need to do to achieve that in this script is click the flip button here, and then set up our conversion for our matrices. I'll show you what that script looks like now. Okay, so all we need for this is a few variables that are serialized. That's our Boolean for flip, to let us know if we want to actually use this effect. Then we want to have a ranged serialized field for a float, which is going to be flipping on the x-axis and then flipping on the y-axis too. So what this range does is it gives us a slider from minus 1 to 1. And serialized field allows us to see this private variable in the editor. So here you can see we have our flip boolean and we have our slider from minus one to one. So this is gonna leave our projection matrix as normal for the camera. This is gonna flip it on the X axis. This will flip it on the Y. And if both are selected, it will flip it on both. In order to achieve that, we need to do a couple of things. We need a private camera for our camera flip. We're gonna need a matrix four for our original projection matrix. Then in our start function, we're going to get the camera on the game object and assign it to our camera flip variable. 
Then we're going to get our camera's projection matrix at the start of the game and assign that to original projection matrix so that we can mess with it later. Then all we need to do in our update script is check to see if we want to flip. If that boolean is checked, we're going to come in here and we're going to assign our camera projection matrix to be our original projection matrix times by matrix for scale. And here we're going to add a new vector 3 and it's either going to be 1, 1, 1 left as normal, minus 1, 1 and 1 or minus 1, minus 1 and 1. Then all we're going to do is just set our flip back to false so we don't come in here again. And that's it. So now all we need to do is drag this camera flip onto our game object and then duplicate this three times and it's going to give us all of our different camera positions. So this is really important the next step. What we're going to do is we're going to go down in our camera to the output tab and we're going to change our viewport rect to 0.5 and 0.5. This is going to mean that each camera is only going to take up half the width of the screen and half the height which will allow us to fit four cameras side by side. For our top left camera, we want to position it at zero on the x-axis and 0.5 on the y. So that will give us our top left. Once these cameras have been duplicated, we need to make sure each one's set up correctly. The viewport rect for the top right camera should be 0.5 and 0.5. Bottom left should be zero and zero and the bottom right should be 0.5 on the X and 0 on the Y. So if we have a look at the game view, we have our top left camera. It's important you name these correctly. We don't want to flip this camera. We want our camera to have its center right here. Now all of the other cameras, because we haven't hit play, are currently in the same format. So let's have a look at the top right. This camera we want to flip just on the x-axis. So we enable flip and slide this slider all the way to the left. On play, it's just going to flip this over. So let's hit play. There you go, and you can see it's flipped it to the side. Now for our bottom left, we want to flip it on the y-axis. So our bottom left camera is going to be flipped across the y-axis. And for our bottom right, we want to flip it on both axes. So this camera is going to go from the bottom right to the center. If we hit play, you can see that these all do what we want them to. For the particle system, we need to create a new particle system by right-clicking, going to Effects, and Particle System. I've set the X rotation to 180 and the Z rotation to 180. I've set the duration to 20 and I've set looping. Here we have a lifetime between 5 and 15 to change that from a single constant. We've got random between two constants. Start speed is random between 1 and 10. Start size between 1 and 5. The emission rate is 10 and we have a shape of a cone, angle of 68, radius of 6. Now here is where things get a little interesting. We've added a small amount of orbital velocity over time. That's what's creating this effect where the particles are spinning around the origin. The color over lifetime I've set to a gradient with HDR so that it is bright. It's just multicolored. You can create new colors and new alpha values by simply kicking on the top or the bottom. Top for alpha, bottom for color. To create the wiggling effect of each particle, I've added a noise. I set its strength to about 3.8, frequency to 0.3, scroll speed is going to be about 0.6, two octaves, Dampening is enabled and about a 0.5 octave multiplier and 2 on our octave scale. The trails of each particle are set up like this. 
we have it set to particle, ratio is 1 and lifetime is 1, max vertex distance 0.2. All we've disabled here is die with particles, so the portrayals die in their own time. We're inheriting particle color, but we have disabled size effect width. When we first add our trails to our particle system, it's going to let us know that we're missing a trail material. So for that, I've just created a simple sprite, and I've created a dot that aligns with the left-hand side of the image, and it's stretched out, fading to the right. And what this does is it means that our trail is actually going to start within our particle. If you used a single circle, it would mean that there was a gap between the particle and the trail. This just makes it a little bit smoother. In order to do that, I just create a sprite inside art software and set it to UI in 2D. Then I create a material, universal render pipeline, 2D, sprite, lit, default. And here I just dragged my sprite asset into the texture slot. Then in the render settings for your particle emitter, you set your trail material to equal your sprite URP material. And that's it. Okay, so the only thing left to do is set up our post-processing. So here we need to just add that override if we haven't done it already. Add override post-processing and balloon. It'll be there if you haven't added it already. Now if I turn this on, you can see what happens. I've set my threshold, 0.5. This lets us know how intense we want the effect to be by setting a cutoff. Our intensity is going to set the brightness of our effect. The scatter is going to control the amount that light scatters away from the effect. And I've set a reddish tint for this effect, but you could choose any color. The only other effect I have on here is a little film grain, but that's not necessary. Now if we hit play, we'll see that each of our cameras flips correctly, our effect plays, and we have a cool effect. Here I have a few more variations of that effect. I've simply duplicated the initial effect and then change some of the values. Here's another one. And as you can see, you can layer these effects to make some really cool patterns. The thing that's really fun to play with is velocity over lifetime. So here I've set my radial in the third effect to minus two, and I've changed the speed modifier to minus 1.8. And that creates some really cool effects. I hope you find this useful. Check out more tutorials on my channel.